This program was brought to you by Organo Gold. Organo Gold is a health and wellness company that provides healthy coffees, teas, and chocolate. All one has to do is consume the available products to get all the available benefits. One can also share these products with others to help them improve their health as well. For more information, call 703-359-5642 or visit the website basillamba.com. And now, Fairfax Breakfast Club with your host, Basil Lemba. Welcome to the Fairfax Breakfast Club show. My name is Basil and I will be your host. The Fairfax Breakfast Club is a weekly program in which we bring to you valuable and workable know-how you can use to improve your networking skills and grow your business. We always start the show with a quote and today's quote is, the door to the American Millionaire's Club is not locked. Contrary to popular belief, there will always be room for the man with energy and imagination. The man who can successfully implement new ideas into new products and services. And that is from J. Paul Getty. With us today in the studio, we have one of those men. His company is called 123 Junk, and his name is Colin Wheeler. Hello, Colin. Hello, thanks for having me. Good, good. See, now I'm, my plan is to get you into the Millionaire's Club. You understand that? <laughs> no, I'm <All> just kidding. <laughs> so tell us about your company. So 123 Junk is a full service junk removal business. What mm -hmm. that means is we send strong men into people's homes or mm -hmm. businesses to pick up and haul away unwanted items for a fee. Okay. And the fee is based on the amount of space the items occupy mm -hmm. on the bed of our trucks. Um, we kind of think of ourselves as sort of like a moving company and a trash company mm -hmm. combined. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a little bit of a unique element, which I'm sure we will get into at some point in this interview. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Okay, uh, you started a company. I did. Okay. What made you start the company? So I was working in sales for a moving company. Mm -hmm. um, I was a moving consultant on the residential side, and I was going into people's homes um, and telling them how much it cost them to move. And what I was hearing from people was we have all these items, this basement, this garage, this attic, mm -hmm. worth of stuff that we don't wish for a moving company to, to, haul, to, to move to our next location. We don't want to pay a moving company to move this stuff that we no longer have a use for. Mm. So. Um, at the time, I reached out to a few of my, you know, my now competitors and um, asked them if they were interested in grabbing lunch or coffee so I could learn about their industry. And I didn't get the vibe that they were interested in sitting down with me, so um, I decided to start my own. I didn't, I didn't quite get it. So you were contacting them, you contact the, the moving company, the current open company, and f f to ask them if. So I was contacting some of my now competitors as a moving consultant and, and the, the, the context of the conversation was um, I'm in a position to, to refer you business. I think that our, our respective industries have some synergy. Mm -hmm. uh, would you be interested in grabbing lunch or coffee so that I can learn about your business so that I could confidently refer you to my clients as I'm in their home? Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I may have taken it the wrong way, but it didn't seem as though any of them, any of them were very excited about the opportunity to sit down with me. So. I did some research on the industry and decided, you know what, this is an industry that I could do. And I decided to just, uh, you know, hang up my moving shirt and decide to become a junk man. Gotcha. Okay. Hmm. And now you have a lot of competition along those lines? Well, the junk removal industry is still a relatively new industry. Mm -hmm. um, when we got into it, um, since we've gotten into it, we've probably seen, you know, 20 local competitors, um, many of which, you know, don't pose a major threat necessarily to us, but it shows that the industry is growing. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so there's a fair amount of competition. Um, and um, it's an industry that I think still has a lot of room for competition because um, at the time that we started, people didn't even understand what junk removal was, how we made a living. And I think over the, the five and a half years that we've been in business, people seem to be a little bit more educated about 
the industry of junk removal as a whole. So the industry, I th feel like, is making moves in the right direction, and people are starting to understand that the concept of junk removal is, is, is something that's probably going to be here for a while. Okay, and then, well, as you mentioned, tell us about your junk removal, and what is that component part? So the one, two, three, mm -hmm. um, well, to take a well, step, so what is one, two, three? One, two, three represents kind of our disposal process. Mm -hmm. uh, when I started the business, what I realized was um, that m although we had many successful competitors, none of them really put an emphasis on the on the order of which the items were disposed of. Mm -hmm. um, none of them focused on you know what would become of the items, um, and you know what they we just took it away and threw it somewhere. It, that's what I saw in my research. So okay. we decided. You know, we would put a twist on it in that we would put more of an emphasis on, um, you know, finding a home for the items because oh. although people are willing to pay hundreds of dollars, maybe in some cases thousands of dollars to have a company like us come in and take away their stuff, this is stuff that was once valuable to them. They want to see it live on somewhere. Um, they don't want to just see it end up in the landfill. Mm. And so one of the ways we've decided to do this is by partnering with charities. Um, to find a home that's not the landfill where we can take um, our clients' items. One, two, three represents donate as our first resort, recycle as our second, and dispose as our third resort. Oh, gotcha. Which is makes you a green company. We're careful about using the word green. <laughs> I'm telling me, at least, um, re trying to reutilize <laughs> what's there. I guess not say green necessarily. Well, we think that you know we're we're essentially in the waste management business. I mean, there's no question about it. We we are contributing to the landfill mess as an as an industry mm -hmm. as a whole. Um, mm -hmm. We're the cousin of a a, a weekly trash service, mm -hmm. um, but because of that, we feel like we have sort of an obligation um, to the environment and to our clients um, to try to be responsible mm -hmm. about how we dispose of the stuff mm -hmm. um, and sort of have a conscience about. Um, what's becoming of the items, even if it costs us more mm -hmm. um, in terms of our operations and logistics, um, to really make that a, 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 an emphasis and a part of our process that we um, are, are kind of thinning out the load when we, when we go into someone's home and seeing that as much items get to our charity partners or our recycling facilities that we work with as possible. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Interesting. What, what I think that your company increased the awareness, help increase the awareness on the handling of junk. I think. Don't you, do you think so? Well, I mean, we're we're a local company. We're Northern Virginia based. We service the D.C. metro. Mm -hmm. um, I think we've done a, f a, a, a fairly good job at having you know a brand awareness on a on a on a regional mm -hmm. uh, scale. Mm -hmm. um, I like to think that we have a, a, um, an awareness that's bigger than reality, so people think that we're larger than we are, um, but I know that we have a, we just barely scratch the surface of our potential. Um, but you know, we're out there um, you know, kind of spreading the message of one, two, three junk, and you know, us along with our competitors, um, we, kinda, we welcome competition because um, I think the industry needs it. Um, the more people that are aware of it, uh, the more people will even think to call or to even start the research process to call a company like ours. Um, so competition is good, um, but yeah, I do feel like we've played a role in creating some awareness here in the Northern Virginia area. I think you name it properly and create an awareness, which is great. It's a great concept to come to think about it, as opposed to just throwing them away. At least there is a, and a non-profit organization, which generally do not have a whole lot of money, uh, it's a good thing for them to at least have a partner where somebody can uh, can take uh, some of that and use it. Interestingly, the next my next guest speaker is a non-profit organization, which makes it very interesting. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think it's uh, admirable uh, to, to, to do something about it. We live in a society known as consumption society, where a lot of people consume. You have a lot of buying that take place. But what's come after that is how do you get rid of some of those uh, items that are bought? Mm -hmm. Some of them are bought in the whim of the moment, and then they sit right there. So now, as opposed to just laying them in the landfill, at least there is a way where they can go. And I think that that's, uh, you're serving at least uh, two or three purposes, getting rid of them, putting them in a place where they could be used, and making the other people happy by uh, providing them with goods that they didn't have before. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's a challenge for us. It's, it's an ever um, evolving process to, to, um, to keep items out of the landfill and to find a good home for them, mm -hmm. um, all our trucks are dump trucks. And what that means is there's a button in every truck that you press and the bed goes up and the items are gone in 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. um, one of my challenges as a leader has been, 
um, how to motivate my staff to to take the harder route, which is to to unload the items by hand um, and bring it to one of our charity partners as opposed to just dumping it. Um, oh, I don't. Okay, okay, okay. Let's get back track. Okay. When they keep take it from the house, do they have instruction from you as to what to do with them, or is up to them to decide? It's up to them to the decide. We, I mean, it's oh, the culture okay. of our company now. Okay, um, that's one of our core values, um, and um, it's environmental stewardship, and that means you know to to have the the least footprint um, that we can that we can have um, in our business, you know, based on what we do. And um, you know we've we've really streamlined the process for um, you know for a, what we think is a very proprietary process um, for having um, a, um, a more thorough um, you know sifting um, process for getting rid of this stuff, um, and and we've built in some incentives for people, my staff, so that they. Um, you know they they feel obligated and they want to you know do good for the community and not just do it because the boss tells them to do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I understand. Um, let me ask you this: How about I don't know that's possible. I'm just thinking the thought through. Contacting nonprofit organization or what have you and asking them to give you the list of the thing they're interested in. Or I don't, I know that they can whatever or they might be interested in, and then maybe that that master list is there and it's passed out to the the people working for you. And knowing, instead of just, yes, of course, they can make a decision, but also they have this information that, oh, this so and so, this, 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 this is needed somewhere. So when they run into it, the connection is made between what they're getting and what's needed. Is this, is this such a thing? I'm just trying to think it. Think, think it. I'm not sure I fully understand the, the question, but I, I, I think. What if, what if you ask non profit organization to tell you what is that they need? They need chairs, they need, uh, I don't know. Uh, mirrors or whatever, ask mm -hmm. them what is that you guys need in one. And then they'll get you that list. Mm -hmm. And then you have that list. And you make it available to your staff. Say, hey, if you run into mirrors, know that so-and-so need a mirror. If you run into some chairs, maybe you ask them to be more descriptive. This kind of chairs, know that so-and-so mm -hmm. need them. And that way, when they run into them, they already have a demand in their mind. Mm -hmm. They recognize that, oh, what I have over here, oh, by the way, they, the list that I was given, they're looking for it. Mm -hmm. you, you get what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. Is it possible to do so? I'm just trying to think it through. Well, you know, the way our process works is we, we, um, we call our home base the Fairfax County Transfer Station, which is a fancy word for the Fairfax County dump. It's not a landfill because it's full now. Mm -hmm. So um, they transfer it down to another uh, Lorton landfill. Anyways, uh, we rent space at the landfill where we've put a 40-foot international shipping container. Mm -hmm. And throughout the week as we're going on with our, 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 our regular business and we're going to the, to the dump to dispose of the contents, anything of value we'll pull out and we put into our storage container. Okay. Oh, yeah. um, by the end of the week, you know, we fill up a 40-foot sea container mm -hmm. and then we have the charities come to us and we and give them up. and pick up what they want oh. and get dibs on it in a rotation. Um, and so, you know, whichever charity happens to be up that week gets the, gets the first uh, shot at it and mm -hmm. then it continues to go through. We have about six charities that we have formal partnerships with okay. and, and that basically, you know, exhausts all our efforts in trying to um, get these items to the charities that need them the most. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Also, because it's not up to you to take it to them. They know where to go and to look for it and get it. Okay, it's the same, feel the exact same thing as opposed to just them letting you know, but at least the, it's there. Um, well, I guess you have it organized with only six, so you're not overwhelmed by everybody pounding on your door that well, they want this, they want that. You know, one of, one of the, the plans for expansion is to involve our charity partners. What we didn't realize was, you know, we thought that we were helping the charities, mm -hmm. and what we've come to realize is they help us quite a bit, too. First of all, they allow us to sort of live out our mission, mm -hmm. um, but also um, they end up becoming referral sources for us. Um, you know, also, well, the goodwill that we that we have, and no pun intended, because there's a charity called Goodwill. <laughs> 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 but the goodwill that we do, just uh, by coincidence of the the industry that we're in, um, ends up getting a lot of buzz within the charities and folks who are involved with those charities, um, and then we brand ourselves within those charities. Um, you know, sort of by, you know, by happenstance, by coincidence. Mm -hmm. And then they start to think of us. And some of these charities are some pretty big names. Habitat Restore, Northern Virginia. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we've recently started working with Salvation Army, which, mm -hmm. you know, the whole world yeah, knows about Salvation Army. Last and there's a number of smaller charities, but, 
you know, behind each charity, there's dozens and dozens of people, in some cases, hundreds of people mm -hmm. that are in some way associated, you know, associated with that charity. Mm -hmm. um, and they know that we're partners with them. Um, you know, now, now they're thinking of us first, and so are their families and their friends and their own ah, networks. Ah, I see. Interesting. Coming full circle, huh? Exactly. We didn't see that coming, and I don't think our competitors really know about it. I guess they will if they watch this program. <laughs> Competitors, don't watch. Close your, eye, close your eyes on this part. <laughs> That's really, really interesting. You know, it's a funny story of um, what goes around comes around. You just went at it trying to help people, and all of a sudden it comes out on the other way around and it turns into something else. Mm -hmm. Well, it's been a fun ride, and uh, we're certainly not saints, and we're a for-profit business, and, and we are making money doing this, um, but it's a little bit of a different Well, twist. you're providing a service. I mean, business, yes, but it's uh, also a service. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have this truck that needs to be paid for, the guys need to be paid for, you have those guys doing the work, so money got to come in so they can get them taken care of. Mm -hmm. But definitely, it's, uh, it ties in with the quote that we started with, really, somebody coming up with the imagination and providing a service and then getting paid for it. Mm -hmm. for what they bring to the table. It's admirable because one of the problems we have today is, yeah, the waste, tremendous amount of waste. It would, all of it could not, some of it could be used by another organization, what have you, as opposed to just taking it from the house, throwing it away. So at least the little bit there is taken and then reused, and uh, now we have less waste and what have you. I think the fact that there such an industry exists as junk removal says a lot about you know this country and and the overconsumption problem that we have. I mean, there's a whole industry that's that's booming right now, or, or, or is growing very rapidly in the junk removal industry that didn't exist you know 10 years ago, um, and that's because of people's consumption habits. And uh, my perspective on things has changed quite a bit. When I started the business, I was much more of a materialistic kind of person. Mm -hmm. I liked things. I worked so that I could have nice things. Mm -hmm. And after having, you know, walked a mile in my shoes, my, my, my value of items have changed a lot. I mean, we go into homes and we've seen both ends of the spectrum where it's the, you know, the, the grimy, dirty, despicable situation that you couldn't imagine somebody mm -hmm. living in. Mm -hmm. But then also on the, on the other end of that, um, beautiful, expensive furniture that was purchased maybe a year earlier for thousands of dollars that mm -hmm. people are now paying a company to take away because wow. they no longer have a use for it. Um, it's just, it's incredible and it still surprises me to this day. As long as people keep buying, I guess we'll just keep, you know, making them go at it. So uh, it's been a fun ride. <laughs> it continues to be fun and exciting for us and um, so I guess I'm not complaining. Well, I mean, uh, the, the bottom line is you got an idea to bring your service to the table and then uh, you have being both ends and those the have and quote unquote the have not for lack of a better vocabulary and you're providing a service. That's remarkable. I like the fact personally that, okay, everything is not just going away, that it can be given a quote unquote a second chance mm -hmm. and use somewhere and then uh, make people happy and save us into just going to get some other items and uh, bring them over. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you explain your success? Allow me to say success. You may not be thinking in terms of success, but I'm, I'm thinking of it now. How do you explain your success? Um, you know, one thing I think is just, um, you know, operating with integrity. Mm -hmm. You know, every, every networking event that I've ever gone to, people say, you know, what makes us different is I care about the customer. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't, you know, I think everyone cares about the customer to an extent. Mm -hmm. um, I think in the service business, you know, so many things can go wrong, and as we grow as an organization, um, that room for error mm. is, is increased, you know, a hundredfold. Every new employee we hire mm -hmm. is, is a potential uh, accident waiting to happen in mm -hmm. a client's home. Mm -hmm. um, and when you're, when you're bringing armoires down, you know, a stairwell, um, things can go wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. walls can get scratched. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's, there's ways to make the, the client upset. Um, I think what we do right, what we got right early as a mm -hmm. small business was that um, we're not going to knock every client's socks off. Everyone who's home we go in, they're not going to be so amazed by the services that they're, they're going to be you know, cheerleaders for life. But if something does go wrong, we're certainly not going to run from, from our problems. Um, and we're going to do everything in our power mm -hmm. um, to fix it quickly and you know, see it through to the end. That includes damages, that includes, you know, if we show up late or if they had any level of a bad experience with us, um, we may not be able to change their mind. Mm -hmm. but we certainly won't, you know, we'll do our best job to leave them with a good taste in their mouth at mm -hmm. the end. 
Um, and it's, it's a simple thing, but um, I think a lot of the bigger companies, a lot of our larger competitors, our national franchise systems, mm -hmm. they, I don't think they get that quite as much. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we make sure we fault with every single customer. We try to dig deep for how their experience was. Gotcha. Um, we invite them to give us bad feedback so that we have the opportunity to make it right, mm -hmm. um, even if that means reimbursing them for their job. And I think that goes a long way, mm -hmm. um, and it spreads. You know, people tend to talk about companies that, that have those types of practices. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. That's good. That's remarkable. Now, tell me, what do you consider your biggest success in life? <laughs> Personal, then. Um, well, first of all, marrying my beautiful wife. Okay, good. <laughs> She'd like to hear that, I'm sure. <laughs> you can watch this. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think employing people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, providing uh, a means for people to put food on their table. Mm -hmm. I have employees with children. Um, I don't have children myself, but I have, you know, a few of my employees have two or three children, mm -hmm. um, and I'm able to provide uh, for, for their family mm -hmm. off of something that I've built mm -hmm. or I've at least started to build. Sure. Um, that gives me a good feeling. Sure. Uh, it, it feels like I'm contributing and I'm changing somebody's life. Mm -hmm. I'd say that's the main thing. Mm -hmm. And what would be your biggest challenge? What would you consider the biggest challenge? Um, I thought I should ask. <laughs> so being married. <laughs> oh, good. Side, oh, oh, so both sides of the coin. <laughs> you you got you to work hard at that marriage. Uh -huh. um, happy wife, happy life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, with regards to business, employing people, um, there's, there's a, mm -hmm. there's a double-edged sword on both areas. Um, mm -hmm. You know, employing people is hard. Coaching people up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, there's a difference between delegating and trying to um, trying to coach and trying to trying to get people on board with your mission mm -hmm. so that everyone's you know rowing the boat in the same direction mm -hmm. um, so that they believe in the things you believe in mm -hmm. and they want for the company what you want mm -hmm. I'm always going to probably be more passionate than most of the people that work for me and I think that comes with the territory mm -hmm. but um, recruiting and finding the types of people yeah. um, that are willing to you know haul junk for a living which is a backbreaking work mm -hmm. um, but um, also have the type of character mm -hmm. that uh, would represent us well as an organization. Mm -hmm. Do you have a training program for them? Well, I mean, it starts with recruiting. We, you know, we, we've really refined the recruiting process. We bring in um, you know, 10 to 15 people for job information, uh, information session. We narrow it down to one hire at a time wow. of those 15. Um, and then we bring them on board. We, we make sure that they're a culture fit, so we put them on what we call a working interview, mm -hmm. where they spend a few days with our staff, um, um, kind of feeling out the position. Mm -hmm. um, once, a, once they get the thumbs up from our staff, mm -hmm. um, both from a, a personality standpoint and from a, you know, you know hauling junk requires mm -hmm. a, a certain level of strength and mm -hmm. other things as well, um, then, then, we, then we put them into a formal training program. I mean, junk removal in itself is not a very complicated thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's lifting furniture safely and navigating it out of people's homes without damaging the homes, and we have measures for protecting the home. Okay. Um, but yeah, there's a there's a training process that mm -hmm. usually, you know, one one month into the job, you pretty much you've got it down. Right. If you don't have it by then, <laughs> then we have a problem. You're never gonna get it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Good. That's good. That's fantastic. And I know that you're a very good networker, and then you get around, and then uh, you get to promote your business because, of course, it's known. And then you truck also, which we'll see on the screen there, mm -hmm. uh, with uh, one, two, three junk, and uh, that's, that's that help make the the company very much known. Well, it helps to have a big billboard on the side of your truck everywhere you go. <laughs> That's free advertisement, I guess. <laughs> I saw just the other day. There's a business that has billboards. They, their their entire business is you put you put your your business on the side of the truck, and it drives around in populated areas. And I thought to myself, we do that every day. <laughs> we have an advantage there. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. What would you now? You did that as a young entrepreneur. You went. You came and created your business, and then it's doing well. Uh, give us here in a minute. What would you recommend to a young entrepreneur? What message? What advice? What it, short advice could you know, be? I've, I've gotten a lot of credit from people who are my elder um, saying, wow, you've, you, know, you've, I, you should be proud of yourself for doing this at a young age. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I appreciate that, and, and I'm glad that that, that that moves people. But the reality is when you're young, you have a lot less to lose. Um, and when I started the business, you know, I had $4,000 to my name, and I just went for it. And I knew that, you know, if I failed, I, I wasn't too far in my career that it was... Mm-hmm. It was going to devastate me. I could always move back in with mom and dad if I had to. Gotcha. And so far, fortunately, I, I haven't. But um, because of that, there was there was the risk factor wasn't there. I didn't have any children, mm-hmm. and um, my cost of living was low. I think doing it young is the best time to do it mm-hmm. because there's there's lots of excuses as you as you move advance in your career. Mm-hmm. Well, very good. Well, thank you very much for coming, and I uh, appreciate having you. And I think that would be a good message for uh, the young people as well as the elderly. Uh, just going for it, taking a chance. Because uh, uh, to me, or oh, for our company, our organization, an entrepreneur is someone who takes risk and to solve problems. And I think that's what you do day in, day out. No risk, no reward. Got that right. <laughs> well, folks, thank you very much. Uh, our next expo is on December 6th. We'd love to have you there. It will be from 9 to 2. Uh, we are going to have 100 exhibitors there and four to 500 business people. We still have some room for those who want to grow their business or take a booth. Our website is ultbizexpo.com, ultbizexpo.com. Also, I want to mention here that we host a monthly breakfast event here in Fairfax at 3999 University Drive. You can learn more about it on our website, which is blnbc.com, blnbc.com. Our next breakfast event will be on October 17. Looking forward to having you there. I thank you very much, Colin, for coming. Thank you for having me. We appreciate appreciate that. appreciate it. Thank you. We'll see you guys later. Have a fantastic evening and a productive day. (laughs) Bye-bye. This program was brought to you by Organo Gold. Organo Gold is a health and wellness company that provides healthy coffees, teas, and chocolate. All one has to do is consume the available products to get all the available benefits. One can also share these products with others to help them improve their health as well. For more information, call 703-359-5642 or visit the website basillamba.com.